public beta of iPadOS is finally out, and I couldn't wait to install it and try out the new Files app with external storage access. I plugged a 4TB USB 3 portable hard drive in with a USB-A to USB-C adapter, and even though I had seen people mention that they might not work due to power requirements, mine powered up just fine and showed up as fast as it would on any other computer. At the moment, the Files app is very beta and has tons of bugs. Mine even has a flash drive that displays permanently despite being removed. It's not compatible with every disk format out there, most notably MTFS, but that's not a big deal because neither is Mac OS. I would really like to see some sort of disk utility added because with external storage comes the need to format disks. Also, as far as I can tell, there is no recycled bin or undo delete option. I was curious about the power requirement, so I decided to try out this hub. An Anchor 4 USB-A port hub with a USB-C connector, but no power delivery port. This means that while you can use this as a hub, you can't charge your device at the same time if it only has one USB-C port. I plugged in the 4TB drive I tried earlier, and it powered up and then showed up in files no problem. Then I plugged in a 64GB USB 3 flash drive, and it also showed up. Next I plugged in a USB 3 SD card adapter with a 32GB card, which also showed up. I was even able to copy some videos to it from the 4TB drive. Now it's not in the video, but I also plugged in a 2TB USB 3 portable drive similar to the 4TB one, and it powered up just fine and gave me an error about not being able to read the file system, which was NTFS, and not a surprise. That means that using this hub, I was able to power two spinning hard drives and two flash-based drives without the need for external power. I was curious to see how much power one drive was pulling by itself, so I plugged in this USB-C power meter. At idle, the spinning drive was using 2-3 to three watts of power and 5-6 to six watts under load. With all four devices connected, two of which were spinning drives but only one under load, they were all drawing about 6-7 to seven watts in total. My very informal copy test showed that I was able to copy this 399.5 megabyte video file to the iPad's internal memory in about 10 seconds. I'll have to test this again with an NVMe drive to see where the bottleneck is. However, this is only a 64 gigabyte iPad, so its internal flash will be slower than the larger capacity iPads. I wanted to try out a couple more adapters I have lying around, so I popped in the Apple one. One spinning disc worked fine both with and without power. After plugging in the power, the iPad was taking in close to 45 watts of power. I also recently picked up this Dodo Cool USB-C hub. It's pretty useful with 100 watts of PD power pass-through, as well as an HDMI port, three USB 3 ports, and SD and micro SD slots. When I populated all the ports, including two spinning drives, the spinning drives did not show up. One of them was making a clicking sound that I have seen before. It happens when drives don't get enough power. That's interesting because the USB-C hub was able to power up four devices from the iPad itself. After plugging in power, all the drives showed up and the iPad was pulling in the full 45 watts again. It's been fun checking all this out, as well as the desktop class browsing and other features, but I can't wait until the proper release of iPadOS in the fall, when all the bugs are ironed out and apps are updated so that they can take advantage of the new features, such as access to external storage. 